So let's finish up uh, this 1.1 here and start off Algebra 2 right here. So let's look over these properties. Um, the last property here that we have um, is a distributive property. And you do know this one from Algebra 1. We definitely obviously went over this. But what this is saying is you take whatever's on the outside and you multiply it. So A times B and get A times B and A times C and get A times C. So to see this with an example, this show you property states, you do 3 times the first time, so 3 times x is 3x, and then 3 times 4, which is a positive 12, which is why I put a plus sign there, as in a positive 12. Hey McElroy, is that your routine? Or a performance of Cirque du Soleil? So we take a look here at uh, example 4. We have um, 3 plus 9 plus 8 equals 3 plus 9 plus 8, basically. but they're grouped differently in parentheses. Um, so what I want you to do is tell me what property do you think that is? So what property comes to mind? And what property comes to mind? It's the associative property. The reason being is, one, we know it's of addition because it's addition throughout the whole thing. And the second thing is we're regrouping. The order hasn't changed at all. We just changed where the parentheses were. So associative property states that we just are regrouping the items. So when we go to solve this, this is all about order, order of operations we have to do. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which means P is first for parentheses. So anything that's in parentheses I need to do first. And that is this right here, 1 plus 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. So I have a 3 there. Please excuse means E is next. E for exponents. So I have to do this now. 2 times 2, or 2, times two or 2 squared is 4. So I have that over there. My is the next for, please excuse, my, which is multiplication. So 5 times 4 is 20. And then we have dear, as in please excuse my dear. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Um, ant stands for A, which is addition. So 20 plus 3 is 17, or 23. And 23 minus 3 is 24. Sally, S or subtraction. What is the difference of 7 and negative 10? The difference. So the difference means subtraction. So we are going to have to subtract it too. So the difference means you keep them in the same order. So it's 7 minus negative 10. So 7 minus negative 10 is the same as 7 plus 10, which is 17. So in example 7, you are exchanging $400 for Mexican pesos. The exchange rate is 8.5 pesos per dollar and the bank charges a 1% fee to make the exchange. How much money should you take to the bank if you do not want to use part of your 400 to pay for the exchange uh, fee? So let's look at what we know. You need to find out first what 1% of $400 is because if I'm taking $400 to exchange and they take 1% of it, I need to figure out what that money is so I make sure I bring it. So 1% of 400 is 0 0.01 times 400, which is 4, meaning I need to bring with me an extra 4 bucks because that extra $4 I can then give to the bank for doing that for me. So really, I'm going to end up taking $404 for the bank. Now, how much will you receive in pesos? So 400 times the rate is uh, 8.5. The reason why I know it's times, the reason why I know it's multiplication is because it says per, pesos per dollar per meaning multiplication. So it's 400 times 8.5, which is 3,400 pesos. So here's your homework. Starting off right. Uh, I hope everyone's going to do their homework. Did you hear that? Uh, the more people who do their homework, the easier this stuff will be especially the quicker we'll be able to get through this. Keep in mind, you should know most of this stuff from Algebra 1. If you're listening in from an Algebra 1 class, no problem. This stuff might be new to you, but of course you don't have to do that homework. But those of you in an Algebra 2 class, you definitely need to get this done for tomorrow. So take a look at this, and if you have any questions or concerns, please email me or look through some examples on my website or Moodle site. Thank you.